I'll be honest, I thought this floor wouldn't be too bad, and yet, I've actually been attempting this for about an hour. I've had really bad luck with enemy placements, and also stunning enemies like that. Um, like I've had a really tough time stunning the Wallywogs, um, so I've lost a lot of Pikmin because of that, and I've lost a lot of Pikmin because of um, enemies being right by the poison generators and uh, getting picked off, basically. Um, this is actually a very dangerous floor. We have uh, Wallywogs, we have an antenna beetle, lots of poison, and orange bulb orbs. Uh, first of all, I want to take out the antenna beetle uh, to restore our radar, and making it much easier to locate where everything else is. Um, I'm pretty sure one of the orange bulb orbs always has the treasure, uh, so we'll have to fight one, and we'll probably, and I'll honestly have to fight both because of their proximity to each other. Um, and also trying to carry it back safely. Um, the other treasure of this floor, I'm pretty sure is always buried, uh, so that is definitely why you want to take out the antenna beetle, because otherwise trying to locate it would be a nightmare. Um, so yeah, let's clear out this poison. Also, there are boulders. Oddly enough, the boulders have given me uh, surprisingly little trouble uh, compared to everything else on this floor. Um, looks like this one uh, does not have the treasure, so that means it must be this one. Uh, it, it would actually be nice if both of the treasures are in this area and not by the Wallywog area. Um, partly, again, because I've just had really bad luck fighting Wallywogs uh, throughout this playthrough, really. A lot of resets have actually been because of Wallywogs. Oh good, the final treasure is actually over here too. Uh, that definitely will speed things up considerably, uh, meaning we don't have to clear out like a bunch of this stuff over here. Uh, so yeah, that actually worked out surprisingly well, uh, but we'll still need to carry it back in a moment. This is the stringent container for 130 Pokos. I'm pretty sure that'll take more than 10 Pikmin, so I'm going to head over here, uh, regroup with the white Pikmin, and carry them back over to the other treasure. Um, I actually realized something uh, during my many off-screen attempts at this floor. Um, the rest floor is actually after all of the fire that we've seen so far. Uh, so one possible strategy, actually that only took fi uh, 5 Pikmin, so 10 was enough. Uh, one possible strategy for the Dream Den is to actually complete it twice, like go partway through with red Pikmin um, up until the rest floor with the geyser, and then basically uh, go through it again with like a different uh, assortment of Pikmin. So that is also an option. And we have the Universal Calm for 100 Pokos. But yeah, we really haven't seen any fire uh, since that rest floor, so yeah, that actually would potentially be an option if you did want to have Red Pikmin for all the fire hazards. I don't want to jinx this, but this should be a much easier floor compared to the last one. Uh, we have a ton of bulb orbs to fight, um, in a fairly, like, um, small area, actually. Um, but if we are careful, let's start with the orange bulb orb because it will uh, wake up the soonest if we don't deal with it right away. Um, and actually, I'm not even sure if we need to fight the others uh, because of where the treasure landed, um, but we will take out these two just to be on the safe side. Again, I've lost quite a few Pikmin already in failed attempts, so I definitely want to make this as uh, safe as possible. Um, Alright, let's round up the white Pikmin once again and carry, carry back this uh, bottle cap. There sure are a lot of bottle caps in this game, actually. Um,
This is the Hypnotic Platter for 100 Pokos. Yeah, that went way more smoothly than the previous, um, previous area. In the center of this area, we can actually see Louie, so we'll help him in a moment. But first of all, I want to sort my Pikmin. Um, I want to take a bunch of yellow Pikmin along, and the remaining Pikmin are going to hide in this area with the president. Um, this is not necessarily the um, best place for the Pikmin to be. Uh, they might still be in danger here, but uh, compared to every everywhere else here, uh, I tend to have the best luck uh, by putting all of the Pikmin in that area. Uh, but with that being settled, let's help Louie. Is that Louie? Mr. President, I've located Louie resting on a vast mound of treasure. For him to venture to these depths alone, the desire of man is a thing to be feared. But Louis is not moving. Could he have exhausted his strength in reaching these depths? There may yet be time. Quickly, to Louis's aid! Our final fight is against the Titan Dweevil. Similar to other Dweevils we've seen so far, uh, this one likes to pick up items. Uh, in this case though, um, it has actually picked up weapons. Uh, this is why I recommend uh, stashing uh, the other Pikmin in this area, because um, in general I have better luck actually um, dodging the water attack uh, by having the Pikmin over here, uh, but you do want to keep an eye on them anyway, um, because it can reach in there. Uh, it's just less likely than like in the corners um, or this upper area, because the Pikmin are very vulnerable like on this ledge. Um, it has attacks based on all major hazards, poison, water, uh, electricity, and fire, um, and will basically cycle through them. Its color will actually change uh, to indicate which it will use, um, which kind of gives you a little bit of a heads up. Uh, the attacks don't necessarily deal damage to the captains, but will actually stagger the captains, um, so be careful about that, especially for uh, when you're fighting um, with Pikmin that do not correspond with the element that's about to use. Um, so we took out the um, uh, water attack, which is very good. Uh, I do recommend taking that one out first, because that's obviously the, the worst one to deal with because of its absurd range. Uh, once that's dealt with, I would recommend going after either fire or poison um, if you're fighting it with yellow Pikmin like I am. Um, one potential strategy that's obviously very time consuming because it was results in having to play the, the entire cavern twice um, is to actually go through uh, the entirety of the Dream Den uh, again, basically use the geyser, keep all your treasures, and then return um, with like entirely yellow Pikmin. Like bring 50 yellow Pikmin and nothing else. Um, and then basically, uh, you only would have to worry about the Pikmin in the arena, and you'd be able to take out each weapon a little bit faster if you have a lot more Pikmin. Again, this is why, uh, this is another reason why I would actually recommend uh, trying to bring along um, more like uh, yellow Pikmin than just 20 to make this fight a little bit smoother. Um, it is doable with 20 yellow Pikmin, I have done it before uh, with that many yellow Pikmin, but it definitely takes a little bit longer, the extra numbers do make a difference. Um, yeah, now that the water cannon's gone, uh, the rest of the fight isn't actually that bad. Uh, as far as final bosses go, this is kind of easy going actually, as long as you stay on your toes, uh, watch out for its, um, its body to change color, uh, to kind of 
uh, telegraph what attack it's going to use next, and then uh, get to safety, basically. Um, yeah, it is kind of a cool fight in that it uses all the elements, but like a lot of elements of Pikmin uh, to... Um, you can basically trivialize a lot of it using like one type of Pikmin in particular. Um, in this case, I feel like you could use purple Pikmin, uh, but because of electricity being uh, instant death for Pikmin, I do not recommend actually fighting this with purple Pikmin. Um, this is the yellow Pikmin's time to shine, uh, which is also kind of nice because in Pikmin 1, I almost feel like uh, because they were mostly um, used for carrying bomb rocks, uh, the yellow Pikmin didn't really get a lot to do other than like uh, yeah, using bomb rocks and picking up items on high ledges. Uh, so giving them an elemental weakness actually uh, makes them uh, stand out a little bit more. Also, by the way, as you start to whittle away at each, um, each weapon, uh, the actual attacks will get more erratic. Um, so in addition to simply um, dealing with all the elemental attacks regularly, um, the actual like strength of the attack will also be increased in terms of like... Um, like with the poison, for example, you have like more poison waves to deal with. Um, I think you have like more water bubbles to deal with with the water. You have like closer electricity here and it actually will light up faster. Um, I actually can't remember if I mentioned this already. Uh, this has taken a couple attempts, but um, just in case I hadn't said it already, uh, the elements won't actually hurt the captains but they will actually stagger them, which can be bad if you're trying to run away from like, you know, fire or water with all the other Pikmin. Um, but with that, we've actually taken care of all of its weapons. All that's left is to fight the Titan Dweevil directly. Um, this is a very arduous fight still, it actually can't hurt Pikmin at this point, um, but it has extraordinarily uh, high health. Um, so yeah, this will take a bit. Uh, the Pikmin are going to also try to carry everything back, uh, but we'll try to call them away, back to our squad, and then toss them up to the Tiny Dweeble. Um, yeah, this is a very time-consuming fight in terms of it just taking a lot of hits, even with, you know, um, a spicy spray. This is still taking a while. It's only now uh, just about to reach half health, and we're basically pummeling it with our entire squad of Pikmin. Um, so yeah, very durable final boss, but again, the worst of it's over. Uh, we can kind of breathe a sigh of relief having gone through the elemental part of the fight and just kind of um, uh, find some catharsis in actually being able to just uh, breeze through the rest of this fight with our full squad of 100 Pikmin. Um, its health is almost completely depleted, and once that's taken care of, um, that's basically our final main uh, challenge. Louie? Are your life functions fading? No, he appears only to have fainted. He is always running into trouble. Instruct the Pikmin to carry him. There is not enough room for him in the cockpit anymore. We will have to keep him in the cargo hold with the treasure hoard. <laughs> and with that, we have our final treasures. We can collect all of the Titan Dweevil's weapons, and Louis himself is treated as a treasure. Um, so yeah, let's carry all this back. We actually don't have enough Pikmin to carry all of these. First up is the Comedy Bomb for 1,000 Pokos. For another 1,000 Pokos, we have the Flare Cannon.
This is the monster pump for 1,000 Pocos. And we have the Shock Therapist for another 1,000 Pocos. So that takes care of all of its weapons. Uh, so let's head over here, uh, round up the White Pikmin, and carry Louie back. I realized I talked about like not having enough Pikmin to carry everything back. Uh, with the Purple Pikmin, we could have made it work, but it would have been very slow. Um, but yeah, we actually technically did have enough, because it takes like 125 Pikmin to carry everything, but the purple Pikmin count for 10. Uh, so yeah, that actually could have worked if we had set everything up differently. Louis is deemed the king of bugs and priced at 10 Pocos. I find it very fascinating that Louis is only worth 10 Pocos. Um, but with that being taken care of, we are officially done with the Dream Den and uh, the Wistful Wild in general. The treasures of the Dream Den amount to almost th almost 6,000 Pocos, uh, largely because of the weapons. Uh, but with that, we have collected every treasure in the game.
And we have our final stats for our adventure. Uh, you can see all of the Pikmin numbers, and we lost none while collecting every treasure in 13 days, which isn't bad. Normally, I do get through this game in about two in-game uh, weeks, so that's a pretty standard clear time for me, and 11 and a half hours in uh, real time. But with that, we are actually not done with the main campaign just yet, because there are a couple things that we didn't talk about yet. So we'll be going over those next time, and then after that, uh, we'll be starting challenge mode. So yeah, our journey through Pikmin 2 is still far from over. So thank you for watching, and I hope you'll join me next time for more Pikmin 2.